Hey guys, Sean here. Today, Luke and I are back with another tier list. Today we'll be talking about the best rogue decks in Yu-Gi-Oh. So we got a few tiers here. We have... Toss it back, fire extinguisher, goblin these nuts, this topped, and that's it. Yeah, okay, so let's begin with a really cool one because it recently came off the ban list. We have Orcist. Now this can kind of include or pure Orcist, Orcist with a Horus engine, any type of Orcist deck. As a rogue deck, I think it's pretty good. I really like it. I think it definitely belongs either high fire extinguisher or low toss it back. Of course, I kind of want to throw it in uh, toss it back because, <laughs> yeah, you know, too. it's just part of the pun. Orcus is really, really good. It's actually really strong. I really like the versatility of this deck. Not only is it doing well on its own, but also having the Horus engine is really, really good as well. Uh, there's a build that I was kind of working on as well, where it's kind of like... Uh, Abyssal runic uh, variant of this deck and I think it actually has really strong potential so I'm really excited to see what this has in store. It's great to see this deck come back obviously it was one of the main decks in Toss format so it's great to see it back in the meta. I feel like Konami unbanned it at the right time because if they unbanned it before all the Horus stuff you wouldn't really see this deck uh, making waves but with the Horus engine and even just with other engines as well it's actually a very good deck so I think this would be one of the best rogue decks in the format right now. And that's why we put it in the top tier, toss it back. Next up we have Red Dragon Archfiend. Uh, I think it's, it's all right. Um, so if you add like Bistuals and all that, uh, Bistual Red Dragon Archfiend is actually very strong. It's a really good synchro combo deck. It's really good with a lot of engines. So even if you want to uh, count Resonators in this, Resonators work very well with stuff like Horus. Horus itself is just like a really good engine for a lot of decks. If you want to play it pure without too many Bistuals, you can even go with the Stone Sweeper, the new Earthbound card. But I do think it struggles a bit against like the best decks in the game, so you know. Up against like Fire Kings or even uh, Snake Eye, like pure Snake Eye, it doesn't really have any, it doesn't have an edge over those decks. I'd make an argument that it goes a bit higher. You have it in Goblin these Nuts right now, but I'd actually put on the low end of Fire Extinguisher. Reason for that being that, yeah, of course, all decks kind of struggle against the top decks right now, but I think the end boards that this can create is really, really good. It can set up a uh, negation with uh, the Abyss Dragon. Uh, also, uh, the level 3 tuner that has in Graveyard, it can stop from a lot of destruction as well, which Fire Kings uh, mostly rely on destruction too, which I find to be very, very good. Red Dragon Irish means also good because of versatility too. Not only can you play it pure, which is also really cheap considering the Stroker deck, but if you're playing with Bistules or any of the other Earthbound stuff you previously mentioned as well, it has a lot of versatility which can lead to a lot of surprises. And surprise is a really, really uh, good factor to have in the deck. So I think low end of Fire Extinguisher, second tier. All right, next up, Ubel. Let's go. I want to put Ubel top tier. I do too. <laughs> okay, fine. Let's look. put her there. Super Poly, the archetype. Obviously, Super Poly is insane in this format. The good decks run it, the bad decks run it. And if your whole deck is based on Super Poly, then it's going to be a good deck. Yeah, definitely one of the best rogue decks. Uh, you can tell by the fact that the Ubel Fusion went up by like 1000% in price. It's actually like fairly expensive now. Uh, it's it's a really good deck. Like, it has an in arc type super poly as well with the eternal favorite, just fusing with your opponent's monsters while having your bell on the field. So it's just it's really good. I don't know what to say. It can also run shifter in the main, which is insane. And the unchained package actually works very well with this deck. It gives you some initiative because when you're playing your bell and your opponent has no monsters on the field, you can't really do much. So having the unchained monsters really helps you put some pressure on your opponent. So I think this is like a really good deck. Also, it has new support that's yet to come out, which will also like really help the deck out. So I think it's like really good for the top tier. Yeah, one thing I really like about you, Bell, is the more I think about it, like how little it kind of dies to hand traps. Because if you're uh, playing you, Bell, in a pure sort of sense, you don't often die to Nibiru. It's mostly when you're leaning towards the Unchained stuff that it kind of can die to Nibiru. However, Yubel doesn't really struggle against a bunch of the other uh, hand traps in the game right now. Uh, it's really good against Troll because what uh, the Yubel cards do is they can actually set themselves first rather than add into the hand to die to Troll. And also, uh, if you're setting the cards right away, uh, Ash can't interact with that either. The main common problem with Yubel right now is it kind of relies heavily on the same gimmick and you need to open the same starters over and over. But uh, the new Nightmare Throne is going to be really, really good for consistency because you're going to be running three copies of that and also one copy of Terraforming as well. Metaverse might be a bit overkill, but it's really good to kind of add consistency to the deck right now where there isn't really much. I think it's really, really cool. The only thing that really uh, keeps you bell down is when your opponent knows how to play around it, they absolutely will. Just don't summon big monsters. 
But I'm really interested where this deck is going. I think it's really, really cool. And any deck that has Super Poly in it, I'm all over. So I definitely think you bell very, very high rogue deck right now. Next up, we have Sword Soul. Sword Soul has always been a good deck. It's never been a bad deck, but it does like lack something. It's very like consistent. It hasn't really changed. The Sword Soul build you've been using since 2020, you're going to be using now. It's fine. It's like definitely a good deck. It has like the power in it, like the cards are very strong. It doesn't suffer too bad from like any individual hand trap. It's just very good at kind of like playing first and second, which is really cool. It's not as powerful as some decks, but I do think like it's never been bad. It's always going to be high rogue. So I think Fire Extinguisher tier is fair enough. Yeah, uh, Sword Soul was never really hit on the ban list. So pretty much the deck has remained consistent throughout its entire lifespan. But that can also lead to some disadvantages. A lot of people know what the deck does at this point and a lot of people know how to out it and how to play around it. So although it is a very, very good row deck, kind of low end of uh, Fire Extinguisher second tier, it's 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 decent. But it, I, I, I don't know if it will be uh, the greatest on this list. Next up, Shadals. I feel like Shadals have a very unique place in this meta, specifically because certain decks are running a mini Shadal package in the side, specifically to counter uh, Snake Eyes. If you're running Shadals, you don't have to run a side deck engine. This is just part of your deck. Shadal Fusion into App Cologne, dumping Ariel and Dragon is basically like a board wipe against Snake Eyes because Ariel's gonna banish three cards from your opponent's graveyard. Your Dragon's gonna pop the Fire King Field spell, and then your App Cologne itself is gonna negate the Sanctuary. It basically creates a scenario where your opponent just loses so much that they basically can't like recover from that point. Shadows are in such a unique position where that's just part of their like main strategy. If you're going second with Shadows, your Shadows fusion is always going to be live and it's always going to put so much pressure on your opponent. Now of course Shadows are a bit outdated, a bit old, but I still think they have so much power in them. So I don't think they're a deck that should be slept on. I think they really do have a place in this meta. Yeah, I think a lot of people kind of sleep on Shadals a good bit uh, as of the moment, especially because it's not really considered the best fusion deck out right now. Of course, that title always goes to Branded, but Branded just has a reputation right now where as soon as anyone sees Branded Fusion, they'll ash it right away. However, if you're going to be activating Shadal Fusion, people kind of want to let you cook a little bit. They wouldn't really expect too much to pop off from it. So they will kind of like let that stuff slide. Again, surprise is a big thing. Uh, in this format, I feel like if you can catch your opponent out, definitely Shadows is a good way to do that. It does have a good place in this format. Definitely, I think it's, it's where it belongs, kind of like a low end of the second tier fire extinguisher. It, it's decent. I don't know if it will break the meta altogether, but I'm still happy to see Shadows uh, having good uh, contention. Also, one more thing to point out. It has an inherent uh, summon limit in Winda, and it also can run Super Poly. These are like the main cards that people put in their side decks but this deck just runs them as part of its engine, which I think is pretty insane. Next up, Raid Raptors. Honestly, a very good rogue deck, probably one of the best rogue decks in the game right now. Um, it's insanely strong. The new support it got in Phantom Nightmare actually pushes this deck so far ahead of the competition in terms of like rogue decks. It's so good. It can play through a bunch of hand traps. It can run a bunch of hand traps. It ends on towers, which in this format, not many efforts to towers. No one's playing Kaijus anymore. It's also really good at going first and second, because going second can OTK very easily. I just think this deck is really good. It, the, the results speak for themselves. This deck has topped a good few regionals in the past like month since the supports come out. I think it definitely belongs in Toss It Back, the top tier. Next up, Virtual World. I'm thinking something like this. Yeah, that was exactly what I was thinking. So it's definitely in the second tier Fire Extinguisher. Uh, not as good as Red Dragon Archfiend, but definitely better than Sword Soul. Virtual World I really like because it can be very versatile and a lot of people kind of play it in their own unique ways. There's some common uh, like staples in the deck, of course you're always going to be running your Shen Shen, of course it's Virtual World, but a lot of people like to run different packages and different ways to kind of like break boards or going first or anything like that. What I'm really liking right now is the Crimson Dragon package. I think the Crimson Dragon package into uh, your King Calamity is really really good, uh, especially when you're going first. Uh, so the fact that Virtual World is able to set it up and play with it with ease I think is really really good and speaks volumes for the deck. The thing with Virtual World, um, a lot like Shadals, a lot of people kind of sleep on the deck and underestimate it because they kind of just figure, oh well this is an old deck from like years ago. It's going to do one or two things and then that's pretty much it. 
But people really underestimate what this deck can do. I mean, Shen Shen is really, really good because it can kind of shut down Snake Eyes quite a lot because any uh, card on the field instantly gets banished and that includes their spell cards as well. So it's really, really good for that. Also, uh, if you guys looked at the previous profiles I did on this deck, I even showed uh, a small package you can play using Beatrice in order to get your El Shadal Winda on the field, which I think is really, really good. Virtual World just has so many directions it can go. People can really make it their own, and I'm really, really happy with the deck. I think it's definitely a very, very good rogue deck. Not gonna be meta-breaking, but it can still pull a lot of games. Next up, Dark World. I will say, probably the top of the mid-tier, Goblin D's Nuts, just because there are so many hand traps this format, specifically Droll and uh, Dimension Shifter, which just kill Dark World. Dark World cannot play through either of these cards. So just for that alone, it's really hard for Dark World to like be good right now. But if you can avoid those cards, that's crazy. But just in the format we're in now, I don't think Dark World is the best. Obviously it's better than a lot of decks, but I don't think it's too, too good. I definitely agree Dark World can steal a lot of games, but considering the amount of uh, decks that are able to play board breakers and like completely shut off turns, Dim Shifter, and super poly even it can it can really mess up dark world quite a lot so it definitely deserves its place in the middle of the tier list next up earthbounds they topped okay there's a lot of potential here with earthbounds they're all right they have a lot like if you read the cards in a vacuum they seem insane uh, harmonic synchro fusion or whatever that card's called where you can synchro and fuse from one card get two bodies for free like it seems insane but it is Earthbounds and they're nothing special. Now you can play the deck with a few other like archetypes, like Runic Earthbound is decently popular, but like it's just, I don't see it doing too well after people kind of get to know the deck. I, I don't, maybe some new support, I'm not too sure, but right now I don't think it's the best deck you could go with. So Sky Strikers, probably the top of Fire Extinguisher. Nah, we'll put them in Toss It Back, because you know, we love Toss Format. Yeah, I, I really like Sky Strikers. However, I would definitely put it on the low end, to be quite honest. Okay. Just because a lot of decks can really play Shifter now, that that completely messes up Sky Strikers uh, in a big, big way. Uh, it's still a very good deck, definitely a very fun deck, probably one of my favorites. I don't necessarily think it's going to be the best rogue deck. I'd actually drop it from Toss It Back down to Fire Extinguisher, no. just because I, do I love Sky Strikers, I'll fight for them every single day however just considering the way this format is right now i don't think it is living up to its full potential of course we still have engage at two which is just not good at all uh there's just a lot of it's been out for so long a lot of people knows how to play around them i will say just wait until june when we get the new sky striker support in the likes of camille and the main deck uh, level one guy this deck will kind of like levitate up a little bit but as of right now considering the amount of people that are playing board breakers playing evenly playing banishing cards like fisher and shifter and stuff like that it just doesn't really hold up too well but wait till june hear me out wait till june next up we have rikas and avalon or even nowadays Rika and Avalon, a Romage, probably top of Fire Extinguisher, mainly because, but you can definitely put, I think, yeah, we'll put it low for the same reason as Dark World, so many hand traps this format that just kill the deck, D-Shifter kills the deck, Droll kills the deck, any combination of like Imperm Veiler kill the deck, obviously with the new a Romage support, Rika's can play like through a lot more disruption, but this format is really not good for Rikas. But Rikas are obviously the best deck in the game. They definitely deserve to be high up there. I do think they do struggle in this format. It's just, it's very tough. So the banning of your Sonavalon engine being your Dryas and your healer to one really hurt. You lose a lot of consistency. You lose the ability to play through hand traps a lot more because the minute your Dryas gets impermed, that your Sonavalon engine is basically cut off, which is very sad. With the new Aromage support, it does help patch up that weakness in some ways. And obviously the deck's strengths are still there. Uh, all your cards are basically kaijus. You can tribute everything for cost. You still have your one card starter combos. The deck is still good, but now's not really the best format for Rikas. Next up, Super Heavy Samurai. This topped? 
Uh, I, I'd give it a bit of slack. Definitely at the bottom of Goblin D's notes, kind of in the middle of the range. I will say this, Pure Sleep Every Samurai completely died after uh, Scarecrow was banned. That really, really hit the deck. However, Super Heavy Samurai is seeing a bit uh, of a new life uh, when people running uh, Runic Super Heavy Samurai. The reason why that's so good is Super Heavy Samurai needs to have no spells or traps in your graveyard in order to pop off. But the Runic engine, they recycle all of your spells from the graveyard back into your deck. It's very rare that you get stuck with spells in the graveyard that you can't pop off with your Super Heavy Samurai stuff. I will say this is a perfect instance where I feel like Runic is becoming the new branded in the sense that a lot of people who had kind of not great decks, kind of roguey decks that weren't doing well. They threw in a branded engine and of course it like did a lot of, for the deck. Runic's kind of going in that direction as well, where a lot of mediocre decks just throw in that engine to levitate it up a few uh, notches. So if we're talking about Super Heavy Samurai, the best way to play it is probably with the Runic engine in it as well. It's doing great on Master Duel, but much like Rika's, this deck really, really dies to hand traps and considering the... Uh, how heavy people are leaning towards hand traps uh, this format this deck can die really really quickly Especially when you're looking at droll not only is that shutting down your super heavy samurai plays That's shutting down your runic plays as well. So definitely on the low end of the mid tier in uh, Goblin D's nuts That's where super heavy samurai belongs next up runic bestial. This was a very very hot deck a few months ago but in a fire format, it loses a lot of its power because it can't rely on the bestials as much to disrupt your opponent We're in a fire format Obviously, Bistos are decent against Fire King and Snake Eye because you can banish the IP. But if that's your only disruption using your Bistos, it's not the best. I mean, I will put it up a bit. It, like, Runic Bistol is a very good deck. Maybe the top of Goblin D's Nuts. Because the Runic cards are really good. The Bistol cards are really good. You can't deny that. But it doesn't have, like, the best position in the meta right now. It can play through a decent amount of hand traps. But stuff like Dim Shifter definitely mess this deck up because they can't banish cards from the graveyard and then all their cards get banished all the runic cards so it does struggle but i do think it's like fair enough you know you find some success with it next up it topped goblins how did goblins top the only topping goblin list right now is a combination of goblins punk and a bunch of level three cards can you really call this a goblin deck i'm not so sure i don't think the deck is too good to be honest with you it's a decent like rank 3 spam deck. It's better as like maybe a mini engine or like some extenders for a rank 3 deck. But it's it's goblins, you know? It, it's goblins. I think the deck is kind of like in its infancy right now. A lot of people just know about goblins and the fact that they're able to like spam like rank trees and stuff like that. So we're kind of like still cooking with the potential of what this deck can do. I think it does have a long way to go. Maybe Maybe a few waves of support that might help it out but as of right now i'm very surprised this topped because honestly let's let's be real it, it goblins didn't top punk topped really <laughs> if you think about it next up marincess the og fire extinguisher uh, i think it's decent specifically because since every card's a one card starter you can fill the deck with hand traps and any deck that can fill its main deck with hand traps is just inherently like good this format because if your deck can run like 15 hand traps and you just stand a chance against any deck. It can't run stuff like Shifter, but it can basically run any other hand trap. Uh, it does suffer a little bit from hand traps. If you get hand trapped at the wrong time, you're gonna suffer a good bit. I think just the consistency itself, with every card being a one card starter, you can run a lot of really interesting side cards as well. I just think it deserves to be like top of fire extinguisher. It's also very budget, which does come into play, I'd say. So yeah, I think it's like pretty good. Next up, Heroes. I think heroes have like a decent place in this meta. Maybe about above Rika's, I think. Because, oh yeah, Dark Law. Yeah, Dark Law is one hell of a card. Plasma obviously has always been good. Skill Drain, one-sided. Uh, DPE is like genuinely very good this format. Dark Angel, gotta love Dark Angel. The deck just has so many like good cards. There's no one hand trap that kills a deck either, which I think is really cool. It can play through a lot. I mean, Nibiru would be the worst hand trap for the deck, but you can play around it. I think it has like a good position in this meta. I absolutely agree. The thing with Heroes is again the versatility of the deck. Is Heroes is just one of these decks that will always adapt to the format no matter what it is. If it is a format that requires uh, anti meta banishing, you have Dark Law. If the format is heavily reliant on like monster effects pop off on the field, they have Plasma. There's so many ways you can play Heroes and so many different avenues you can take. 
that it's it really doesn't matter either you will always see heroes no matter what it's a fan favor as well people know how to play it people know its strengths and weaknesses it can just really adapt no matter what the environment so it definitely deserves to be in the mid tier of fire extinguisher next up we have sprite i would say the top of goblin these nuts mainly because it can run shifter uh it does suffer from shifter too but it can run shifter it can play around a lot of hand traps because uh, Gigantic Sprite just shuts down Nibiru and stuff like that. But it can't play as many hand traps as other decks. It's like not too bad. It's not nearly as bad as on Master Duel where half the cards are hit. It's definitely like a solid deck. It definitely has its strengths, but it definitely has its weaknesses. So I think like this is like the definition of a mid-tier deck right now in this format, I think. Next up, Dinos! Okay, we'll put Dinos like the bottom of Fire Extinguisher. Because dinos are great, we love dinos. Misk is like the main way that this deck is good because if you have Misk, you're protected from all the hand traps. But yeah, it can just do a lot. Ground Xeno added a lot of firepower to this deck. Cards like Evolzar Lars are just fantastic. The fact that this deck really benefits from using that card because you can use it twice is just insane. Flipping your opponent's cards face down is like pretty decent in this meta. Uh, if you have like a UTC on field, it can definitely disrupt like Fire King and Snake Eye plays. I think Misk on its own really like gives this deck a chance, especially compared to a lot of other decks. Next up, Runic. I guess we'll go pure Runic, even some Runic variants. It's all right. I guess we'll, talk, we'll mainly talk about pure Runic here. It's okay. It's all right. There's nothing special about pure Runic. It's just like a stall deck, basically. I think even in this meta, pure Sprite is almost better than like any Runic Sprite variant. It's, it's all right. <laughs> nothing special, to be honest. Yeah, people know what it does, people can play around it. It's it's an annoying deck to go up against, but you can beat it, so it's whatever. Exosister, I think just by the fact that they can run Shifter in the main deck, and they all revolve around Banishing, I think it's pretty good. I think it's like in Fire Extinguisher, almost like mid-tier. It's like a good deck, you know. It's basically like the anti-meta deck of this format. Essentially, it's worse fun to use. So I, I think it belongs like around here. Uh, it can also main deck stuff like evenly matched, which is very good. It's not the be all and end all for Snake Eyes and Fire Kings, but it's definitely a very strong hit. Uh, running it in the main is just fantastic. The deck can run a lot of hand traps as well, which is really good. So yeah, I think this is like belongs about here. Next up, Goaty. This thing topped. Okay, it probably goes at the top of this topped because you know Goaty's not like terrible. It's a good synchro spam strategy. Uh, Goaty Runic is okay. The new like white fish support is decent. I feel like it has a lot of potential. It does like banish stuff, which is really cool, but it's like, it's okay. And I just really don't like the deck to be honest with you. So yeah. Yeah, you know, Goatee, it has its fans, but you gotta admit it was, it, it's not really gonna be the like meta defining deck as of right now. It's not going to be the best rogue deck as of right now. It has a lot of potential, but just considering the way things are going, yeah, definitely low end of the lower tier this top. Synchrons. So here's the issue. A lot of people run Adventure Synchron so that you can set up your Adventure Engine before you go for your Synchron plays. Therefore, you protect yourself from Ash, Imperm, Droll, all that. The problem is, that's one negate. In this format where people are playing like 15 hand traps, they're going to draw multiple hand traps. If you Imperm, Ash, Valor, uh, the Junk Speeder, then the deck just dies. That's three hand traps that pretty much everyone's running. So it's tough. And also uh, Droll really hurts this deck too. So it's a tough pick. It goes crazy if you get through an Onslaught of hand traps. This deck goes insane. It's a fantastic synchro combo deck. But it's just, it's a very uh, glass cannon type of deck. Yeah, I, I definitely agree. I think it can probably even drop a few slots on uh, Goblin these notes. Yeah, definitely just below Dark World in the sense that it takes more setup than Dark World does in order to get like their big guys out, which can like really, really screw them. So although I really do enjoy the deck, it's it's not great this format, to be honest. And also Shifter will completely ruin this deck. Mechanko, unironically, it's a high tier deck because it can run the Snake Eye engine, or like the Diabell Star engine, because it has level 1 fires in the deck, which like start your uh, Mechanko combo. It also has access to stuff like Acid Golem locks, which are hilarious. I think it's genuinely a very good deck. It's kind of like Ubel in the way that you just attack your opponents and then they take the damage. 
Um, not as good because I can't break boards as easy. But I do think it's like genuinely a very good deck. The, the Snake Eye engine really does, or like Die Bellstar engine, really puts it up there. But um, yeah, on its own, I think it's like not too bad. Yeah, I definitely agree. It has a lot of uh, similarities between U Bell, but considering U Bell can break boards uh, more easily by, by using its pure super poly effects, I think it's just a little bit better. So Mechanical is getting outshined as of right now, but still a very, very good deck. Crystal Beasts, I think maybe. It's kind of like worse Exorcister in the way that it does, it's kind of like a deck, or it's kind of like a graveyard lockdown type of deck. So you have your D Shifter, you have your Necro Valley. You can even play Secret Village of Spellcasters. It's a good control deck. Um, but is it as good as Exorcist Sisters? I'm not so sure. No. Well, we recently took this to a Locals uh, as well, and I played it. I went 3-2, uh, which was like decent enough, but I've been playing Crystal Beast like, since before it was good. I, I was that hipster that played Crystal Beast. It was... It, this deck can do a lot, however, it's just kind of doing the same crap over and over again. You can Shifter, you can Necro Valley, and then Number Busca and stuff like that, which of course is all really, really good, but unless you're opening that exactly, the deck is kind of lackluster. People will kind of just wait it out and then they could kind of pop off from there. But overall, I wouldn't say this deck is amazing. I think it was fun playing it, but I, I, I don't know. I, I feel like I had less fun playing this deck. That's why I'm kind of like, in a bias of saying it's kind of bad. Next up, Horus. I think pure Horus suffers a lot from the hand traps, specifically the shifter, because you really want your graveyard. But as an engine, it's extremely strong. So I think it belongs about like mid tier of fire extinguisher, just because like, obviously it's a great engine, it does a lot of stuff, but there are certain hand traps in particular that really make the deck suffer. As a pure deck, yeah, I don't think it's like fantastic. But as a engine in a lot of other decks, I think it's really good. So that's like kind of my reasoning why it goes about mid-tier of like the second tier. Definitely more of an engine so than it is a pure deck. I am a certified uh, Salamangrate hater. However, it's hard to deny that this deck is very good. So obviously it's a fire deck. It doesn't need the Diabellstar engine, which is really good. You can just play uh, Promethean Princess and uh, you know, you're good to go. Also, because this deck runs Hita, the Fire Charmer, uh, in a match against Snake Eyes, you just steal their Fire Monster in the Grave to continue your Link plays. And it's very easy to OTK with your new Link 4. It's just a fantastic deck. It can run a lot of hand traps as well. This really is uh, the Toss It Back format because Toss decks are just really good this format. It's it's crazy. Yeah, it's really, really cool seeing Orcas next to Salaman Grades in like being a really really good deck. It's a shame Sky Strikers aren't quite there right now in June when new support comes out. Yes, it'd be very very good. But Sal Mangrates are great. They're, they, they're so versatile and they're really able to have good recovery as well. I, I think Sal Mangrates are definitely very very good. And the fact that it's fire in fire format, yeah, this is a really really good deck. Finally, Elf Lich. It's whatever, like it's, it's Goblin D's nuts. It's okay, it's a, a trap stun deck. It doesn't do anything special. It's the same deck from 2020. It's fine. It's just Eldritch. I mean, stun decks are not too bad because summon limit and stuff like that really hurt Fire Kings. But it's all like it's not terrible, but it's not the best. It's fine. If you still play Eldritch, grow up. So that's it for the best rogue deck tier list. So let us know what you think in the comments. If you disagree or agree, let us know. So thanks for watching. Give us suggestions for a tier list you want to see in the future. And yeah, stay tuned for more content.